Hello everyone and welcome back to another TSW2 Rush Hour video. Today I'm going to be checking out the Bakerloo line and the new improvements that have been made to it. Let's get into it. Before we do though, I'm going to ask all of you to like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video and you haven't already. Okay, so we have spawned in on the 1972 stock. I haven't really driven this in a while, but I'm going to try and set it up the correct way. Uh, oh, I actually didn't press the button to open the doors. Auto did it for me. I'm not sure if that's new. Uh, let's get these windows open. I'm only going to open that window. Let's get all of the train set up. And then we'll be checking out what's new. Hmm. Oh, there we go. Brakes had to release. Okay. Let them release again. Okay, I like this. I like this. This is more realistic. It takes more time to set up the brakes. All right, turn off the tail lights. Get the gauge lights on. Saloon lighting for the passengers. Uh, we're not gonna be turning our cab lights on. Let's go with the cab fan speed low. Stand clear. So I've learned uh, that real operators actually don't drive with their. Uh, cab lights on it creates glare on the windscreen so we'll be using that today but uh let's get moving uh the first change that they've implemented that uh i'm looking to see is uh speed limits being triggered by the front of the train so when we come up to this uh 15 mile an hour speed limit i expect it to go into effect immediately instead of having the back of the train activated um, but this is just one of a few upgrades and updates they've made to the line. Um, let's see. And it's changed. Okay, that's working properly. Um, I kind of wish they updated the general sounds of the line, you know. Um, one thing I've said a lot is the actual uh, sounds on the line are incorrect, you know. They're inaccurate. The track noise isn't there the whole time. Uh, there's not enough running noise and all that. It just kind of feels like you're running on air instead of, you know, running over track joints and stuff. Um, it's unfortunate. It's something the Boston Sprinter route does fairly well around the Boston South area. So I'm not sure uh, if that's new tech they've implemented on the new rush hour routes. But it would have been nice to see on some of the older routes like this one. But uh, we're going to be coming up to the Lambeth North here, about 25 miles per hour. Um, let's see if they've done anything to the stopping positions in the station. Because um, one thing I do remember before is the, stop the stopping positions were a little bit off. They were in the wrong uh, places. Alright, we're going to coast into the station here. Start lowering our speed. Hmm. Brakes seem a little less strong. A little, a little weaker than before, honestly. Hmm. Used to be able to brake there, come into the station, stop right in front of this with the camera display right here. Oh, we didn't set our destination blinds. We're going to Stonebridge Park today. Kind of rusty with the Bakerloo line here. Alright, signal should be green. Yep, alright, there we go. One thing I do like is how the cross here in the middle of the screen just disappears if you don't move the screen for, for a little while. It's a nice change that Sam suggest, suggested uh, to the team, and I'm really happy it was implemented in Rush Hour. But, um, I've definitely been enjoying TSW Rush Hour, you know. Um, I've been playing the new Boston Sprinter route a bit. I've been working with some liveries. Unfortunately, they look extremely pixelated, so I'm not able to make any videos on my liveries right now. But, uh, I've been enjoying playing TSW a little bit, you know. Still waiting for the rest of Rush Hour to release you with the Brighton Mainline and Risa to Dresden, which actually had a preview stream today. I'm recording this on uh, Tuesday, August 31st. This video should be releasing uh, September 1st, uh, which would be the day after the preview stream, but 
I actually just watched that preview stream earlier, and the route's looking fine, you know, it's looking really nice. I'm liking the, uh, the different colored ballast on the, on the route, and how many layers there are, and they also said that most of those layers, if not all of them, should be coming to the last gen consoles, which I'm extremely excited about. But, uh, here we go, approaching Waterloo. And we're gonna stop right here. Okay, open the doors. Oh wow, we're not able to check the outside. Is it because I don't have the window open? Nope, not because of that. Interesting. Alright, but let's get moving. Um, but I'm really excited to see what else they've done with Rush Hour. Here they've improved the night lighting on Reese's to Dresden, which I've seen in the stream. Looks, uh, pretty nice. Uh, they could have done a little bit more to improve it. Uh, but I do like how the headlights shine further in the distance, you know. Would be really helpful on this route, because we can barely see anything in a tunnel right now. And I know that the headlights are a little bit brighter in real life when it comes down to the 72 stock. So it would have been nice to see you on, uh, this route. Another thing that would have been nice to see is uh, improved AI traffic and just traffic in general on the Bakerloo line, you know. I understand that the signaler has to be upgraded, uh, and that's unfortunately not possible right now, but the current Bakerloo line in the game feels just unrealistic with how with such a few uh, number of services on it, you know. It's supposed to be fairly frequent with trains coming every three to eight minutes, and you look at some of the destination, um, the PIS boards, and they'll have trains coming every 45 minutes or so, you know. Which is a disappointment, but I guess we just gotta deal with it for now. Perfect, stop. One thing I wish they added uh, with the Baker Lou line improvements is the stop markers. Um, from what I hear with the Baker Lou line, there are stop markers in the middle of the stations. The stop markers show on the ground right in front of you. Uh, it's like a little diamond on the ground from what I hear. I really wish they included that with the, the new upgrades. But unfortunately, they didn't. Um, honestly, a lot of work needs to be done to the Baker Lou line to make it really like feel as realistic as it should, you know? And a lot of the work, a lot of work has to go into the sounds, you know, sound design and just timetable design, you know. They don't give you enough time to set up the train with the Baker Lou line, which I've noticed, you know. They don't give us enough time to go to the back of the train, set the destination blind, go to the front of the train, set the de destination blind, and set up the train the right way, you know. They just expect you to open the doors and be off with it. Um... So there's a lot that they have to do to the Baker Lou line to really get it up to par with, um, number one, some of the newer routes in TSW and just really make it realistic, you know. I hope, I hope they do go back to the Baker Lou line in the future and, you know, give it some more upgrades because it really does need it. It looks like they've improved the, the stop times at the state. Wow. It looks like they've improved the stop times at the stations, made it a little bit faster as I close the doors too early. But uh, let's move on to our next station, which is Piccadilly Circus. We are moving through the underground section fairly quickly. I believe we only have maybe 10 more underground stations after Piccadilly Circus. So we're making good progress. But there's a lot that could be done to this line to just make it that bit better, you know? and more realistic and really feel like a London Underground route. Really do hope they add more underground lines in the future, but I would like them to really get this route uh, set and done, you know, with all of the upgrades that it needs and stuff, like passenger announcements and all that. I know that that's a licensing issue, but I really hope they could do that in the future. Um, and then I would like them to move on to some of the other tube lines. Maybe the circle could be next. Although I feel like the Piccadilly will be next since it's kind of similar to the Baker Loon line. They wouldn't need to make too many changes to the 73 stock from the 72 stock. And uh, the Piccadilly line is still fairly interesting. You know, it's, I believe it's 50 miles long, has two branches. One that goes to Uxbridge with the Metropolitan line and another one that goes to Heathrow Airport. Has some express and local sections with the district line around Ealing Broadway. 
So it's a fairly interesting tube line, you know, that I feel like they can make in the future. I just hope they uh, make some more tube lines for the game, you know. I feel like a lot of players would enjoy and would uh, love to see that. Let's make sure the brakes release. Yeah, we stopped in the right place. Oh, we can actually hear the brakes releasing now. That's cool. But, uh... I do like some of the changes. It feels like the brakes are a little weaker on the on the um, 72 stock now, which does encourage you to kind of slow down a little bit early. But with the way the timetables are, how unrealistic they are and inaccurate, I don't know uh, how I how I like the new brake design. You know, with the way the timetables uh, timetables are laid out, with the AI controlling them instead of actual players and uh, putting in the real timetable, um, I don't know. It, it kind of makes it a little tighter than it should be. Because um, in real life, I'm pretty sure you get more time in between each station according to the rail schedule, you know, uh, to really move. But um, I don't know. The bricks being weaker, it, it's a, it's an interesting change. But I feel like it makes up for it um, with the speed limit changes, you know. You're able to get into the, the next speed limit a little quicker with it being activated by the front of the train now um instead of the back so it is a little easier it seems to keep the time but we'll go, we're gonna have to see uh if we arrive to stonebridge park early or late here we go pulling into oxford circus here I'm going to start slowing down right here in the station. Yeah, it's going to take me a little while to get used to the brakes on this train again. Used to be really good at managing, like, stopping points and stuff, but it seems like I'm going to have to relearn stopping positions and stuff. Is there a train passing us? Yes, there is. But I just wanted to take the time to make a video and uh, show off some of the Bakerloo line improvements or whatever, you know. Uh, it seems like not much was done, honestly, with the route. Um, just a few things here and there. They could have done much more. I really would have appreciated some uh, sound improvements, honestly. Uh, would have really been nice. And I really hope one day they could figure out the Bakerloo line's timetable, you know, make it more, um, more quick and, you know, make it really feel like rush hour, you know. Uh, add more trains to the line like in real life Cause give us the real timetable you know i feel like it'll be a much funner experience to be traveling through the tunnels you know and encounter some yellow and red signals you know it, it'd just be a more dynamic and interesting experience and i hope one day we could get maybe a london overground route in the game and uh, they could add some uh, overground traffic on the actual overground part of the line with the Watford DC line between uh, Heron and Weldstone and I believe Queens Park. It would be really nice to see that with maybe the class 710 and or the class 378. Possibly even the 313 with uh, Silverlink. So that would be a nice thing to see in, uh, maybe in the future. I would love to see this route get the passenger upgrades as well. I feel like it could really use it, you know? Uh, it would have been nice to see it included in the original Rush Hour, Rush Hour release. I'm not sure why it wasn't, but it could definitely benefit from that. Because you barely see any passengers on the platforms uh, right now, you know? I'm seeing maybe, what, eight passengers on the platform right now, and it's about 2, 3 in the afternoon? You know, real life, we real hustle and bustle right now. 100 people on the platform. Uh, waiting for the next train. So that's one thing I hope they can improve, make more realistic. Looks like we are keep, keeping the time right now. Uh, about 15 seconds early, so that's good. And we're going to close our doors right now. About 8 seconds early. And get moving to the next station, which is Baker Street transfer is available to the circle line I would love to see the circle line and uh, uh, sometime at some point appear in the game you know I love the, uh, the subsurface stock 
uh, S7 and S8 stock are two of my favorite rolling stock um, from the whole system, you know. Um, if we're talking about deep tube lines, it have to be the 96 stock and maybe the 09 stock. But if we're talking about in general or just the subsurface lines, it's definitely got to be the S stock, S7, S8 stock, S7 plus 1 stock. Um, even the C stock from the past. Um, I'd love to see a circle line route up here, which is why I've suggested all of the subsurface lines, you know. I really do like those those lines. I really do like the S stock, and I would love to see maybe a, a modern route that includes an older type of timetable that includes the C and D stock, you know, the C69 and the, and the D70, uh, the 78 stock, you know. That'd be really cool, as I really do like both of those strains. Used to love seeing both of them in a uh, World of Subways 3. Okay. Slowly pull up. And we should be good there. This is what I mean by the brakes are a bit different. It's going to take me a little while to get used to these brakes on a train again. I'm trying to look out the window here, but it's not letting me. Very odd. Might as well just open this window, actually. Oh, we got to leave. Hold up. There we go. And now we're moving on to the next station, which is Marlebone. We should have maybe three more stations before we uh, get to Queens Park in the overground section. So we are making quick progress uh, right now. I'm pretty sure that's because the speed limits are now triggered by the front of the train, making you overall move quickly uh, through the system. But I really do hope more uh, underground lines come to the game, and subway lines in general, you know. Subway lines will be really interesting uh, for, their, for their sim. And I'm pretty sure a good portion of players would purchase a subway route, whether it be New York City subway, the Paris Metro, Tokyo Metro, or even the London Underground, you know. Some very interesting subway systems around the world that DTG could focus on and turn into a route for TSW. Looks like we're going to overrun this stage. Yep, we're going to overrun. I haven't done that in a long time with the Baker line. They definitely messed with the, the brakes. Let's see how bad it was. And let's turn on some, some lights in here. Doesn't give us too much glare. Okay. One. Eh, two. We overran the station by one car. Wow. I haven't overran the station on the Baker Lou in a long time, so they had to have messed with the with the brake systems on this train. Cause I used to be able to come into the stations at 30 miles per hour, 40 miles per hour, slam the brakes into step three and stop on a dime. Um, I really hope that's true to life. I'm gonna have to get in touch with the with the operator on the Baker Lou line uh, to see if that's true to life. Hopefully it is. Hopefully it's not an unnecessary change. But uh, now I know, coming to stations at a reduced speed, especially when underground. But here we go, approaching Ed Edgware Road. I believe that's another transfer to the circle line. Yeah, we're going to start reducing that speed right from the entrance to the station. Yeah, we should be good here. Wow, this train is starting to make me feel like I'm operating a BR-423 with how weak the brakes are now. It's, it doesn't feel right for an underground train to have such weak brakes. I'm trying to get the camera position right. But it doesn't feel uh, right for an underground train to have such weak brakes. Right, moving on to the next station, which is Paddington. Change for the GWR. Yeah, this feels better with having at least one cab light on. I just need to be able to see a little bit of the controls in the cab. It's way too dark without it. One thing I do like is the operation shift works on this train, so I'm going to use the high and low whistles without having to connect a keyboard. It's a really nice touch, but... um. I don't know, I feel like they could have mapped some more things to the operation shift, I don't know. I don't know exactly what they would have mapped to it, but, oop, over speeding. 
I don't know. In certain trains, it seems like they could have done more with it. And we're going to start slowing down here. Now we should be good. Uh, in the future, I might be working on a London Underground signal guide, teaching all of you uh, what the different signal aspects mean in the system. It seems pretty straightforward, or it might seem pretty straightforward, but the signaling system is fairly complicated throughout the system with the different repeater signals and automatic signals and all of that stuff. Um, and it took me a while to get used to it and uh, really learn it. I remember there was this one time I was trying to operate without the HUD in the system. And um, I was closely trailing behind a train that operated about maybe 30 seconds before me. Uh, it uh, departed Edgeware, not Edgeware, uh, Elephant and Castle about 30 seconds before me. Um, and I was closely trailing it. And I kept getting restricted by the signals. And it, it was really cool. Um, experiencing that kind of it's not really a dynamic event because it's part of the timetable but it, it was really cool experiencing a kind of like a delay you know coming up to a, a yellow signal slowing down it's showing a repeating aspect so the next signal is yellow the next signal is yellow and then coming up to a red signal thinking you're about to spad slowly changes into a yellow it's really cool um, I'm gonna have to make a London Underground signaling guide it's not a promise to make that in the future but I'm definitely thinking about it. Uh, either a London Underground signaling guide or a route guide, which I'm actually working on. I've, uh, I believe I've just finished the uh, Cathcart Circle route guide from Glasgow Central Station to uh, Newton uh, via Pollock Shields West. So that should be releasing on Friday, should everything go to plan. Uh, and I can't wait to release that to all of you. It's going to be a nice, uh, nice thing to show off. I really do enjoy helping all of you with uh, just driving trains in the game and learning different things about them. really do enjoy making those types of videos and I plan to do more in the future. plan to do more in general with uh, my content on TSW, you know, and not just stick to making suggestion videos because that's what I was kind of doing for a long time, making suggestion videos and the odd uh, cab ride video here and there. But I think we're going to get into more different kinds of stuff, you know, like maybe delivery designer, scenario planner, these types of videos when I'm talking in them, in-depth analysis. I'm trying to expand the content variety out. And in the future, I will be uh, working with Bus Simulator 21, which should be coming out next week. Uh, really excited for that. have a video coming out on it, I believe, either on Saturday or Monday, talking about everything you should know about the game. So... If you're interested in Bus Simulator 21, be on the lookout for that video. Should be coming later on this week or early next week. Um, but I'm definitely uh, thinking of ways to diversify a lot of the content. I'm even uh, thinking about working on a Baker Lou line inaccuracies video. And I know it's going to seem like I'm nitpicking a lot in that video, but I feel like some of the inaccuracies with some of the routes in the game needs to be addressed. It needs to be addressed in a fullest extent, you know, it just can't be in one review talking about one inaccuracy when there's a whole bunch of glaring inaccuracies along the route, you know. So I think I'm going to be making a video on that with the whole Becker Lou line, you know, talking about, uh, first thing is probably going to have to be the timetable, then automated announcements, then the sounds in general, you know. I'm going to have to talk about all of that, um... And it's kind of like an encouraging thing, you know, try and get DTG to do more with each route. Uh, just make everything more detailed and get everything up to par uh, from the past. With um, Get all of the past routes and locals up to par with what they're currently doing, you know. Because a lot of the routes that's currently in the game that they're currently making look very much detailed, you know, like uh, Boston Sprinter. Uh, what's another route? Let's see. Cathcar Circle Line was a really, really well done uh, route. And I feel like that, that, that route, if a lot of the, I guess, if a lot of the quality um, was kind of given to a lot, of, a lot of the other routes in the game, it could just make them so much better, you know? The Baker Lou Line needs that type of quality on it, you know? Right now, the Baker Lou Line is just 
another route, but this time it's underground. You know, it needs more to really make it feel unique and special. Uh, give it uh, better sounds, give it automated announcements, all of that stuff is really going to improve it, you know. There's a lot that needs to be done with the different routes in the game to make them feel more realistic and make them feel uh, unique towards one another. I've seen a lot of people on the forums talking about, well, this is just another British route, or this is just another American route, or this is just another German route. You know, DTG, uh, when creating a route, they need to focus on not making it seem like just another one of this, you know. need, need to make each route feel unique. A lot of the German routes feel samey towards each other. Hapstrack Ryan Ruhr and Ryan Ruhr Austin can barely be told apart because they're both German routes with a whole bunch of trees and stations with red trains. And that's about it. What differences are there between them, you know? DTG needs to work on uh, making the routes unique. If that, if that calls for getting the specific people, uh, get, getting licenses from the people who make the announcements, then that's what it's got to be. But a lot of the routes do need to feel unique. And I feel like they're moving in the right direction with TSW Rush Hour because I look at Boston Sprinter and to me it doesn't feel like just another American route. It feels different from routes such as Peninsula Corridor, LRRR, and the original NEC route. I look at Risa to Dresden, and while it is kind of like just another German route, it does feel a bit different. You have uh, better types of scenery on it. You have, you're crossing one of the bridges coming out of Dresden, and you look to the right, and you can see Dresden City Hall and a big skyline of the city. And that's different from some of the German routes we currently have in the game. With HMA, you can't look around and see the Munich skyline. With Clone to Aachen, you can't look around and see the Clone skyline. And with uh, Ryan Rural Austin, you can't look around and see the Hagen skyline, you know? That's something that's unique to the Reese's to Dresden route. Um, and what would have made it better is if they would have included the branches. But we're not going to talk about that in this video. Because that's going to be kind of depressing, honestly. Um, whoa, whoa. This is a new signal. I don't remember that signal being there. Interesting. I haven't been on this part of the uh, overground yet with the new updates, so a lot of this is going to be new to me, which is why I'm not going to turn off the HUD. Even though I do know how to operate it without the HUD, I'm not going to, because uh, I feel like this is going to be something that trips me up. That's the overground tracks. Hopefully, we could get that in the future. All right, so we're going to be pulling into Queens Park here. Repeater signal and automatic signal. I'm gonna stop right here. And there should be fine. Hmm. These should change, right? Yep. I haven't driven to Baker Lou in a long time, so some of the signals is a bit foreign to me right now. But uh, continuing what I was originally saying, a lot of routes need to feel unique to one another, you know. Uh, and I feel like they're moving in the right direction with Rush Hour. I just hope Brian Mainline doesn't feel like just another uh, British route. And the British routes, to me, haven't just felt like just another British route. I've noticed a bit a bit of differences between them, you know. Uh, Southeastern High Speed and East Coast Way feel different to each other. But they need more differences. They need more distinctive differences that you can look at one route and you can look at another and be like, yeah, that's East Coast Way, you know. And I feel like that really can come in the form of making things more accurate, making things uh, feel true to life. You know, platform announcements, we already have that in the game. But on train announcements should be the next thing they're looking forward to. You know, they're looking for to add into the game. Maybe uh, more accurate and uh, more informational and detailed uh, PIS screens on the inside of trains, you know. The class 377 has a, a screen on the outside of it, which shows you all of the stations the train is going to call at. 
So on the side of, let's say, a Southeastern class 375, uh, it'll show the destination of the train, which is, let's say, London, Victoria, and then under it, it would say, calling at, uh, let's say, Raynham, Gravesend, Gilling Gillingham, uh, and Rochester. They need to add stuff like that to make it feel uh, more true to life and more realistic. And we've switched into the regular British signaling now, and uh, speed limits. So that 45 limit kicked in after we passed the 45 uh, sign. Which means now we can turn off this. There we go. And I'm going to bring down the sun visor a little bit, and we should be good. But it's stuff like this, just on the tracks right now. This doesn't really feel like a London Underground train, you know, with the sounds. It feels like I'm hovering on air, to be honest. You know, I need to I need to hear more creaking sounds in the cab. I need to hear more track noise, more running noise. It can't just be a static whoosh sound, you know. Honestly, it sounds more like we're going through a tunnel flying more than we're on the tracks, metal against metal. Here we are pulling into Kensal Green. More people on the stations than normal. I know this route doesn't have the rush hour upgrade, so this is surprising. And now we're able to look on the outside. There we go. Yeah, it's a shame we can't uh, fix this right here. Let's see if we could get to the front of the train and get a nice little pass by shot. All right, let's get this. The light baking in that tunnel really needs to be fixed. The train looks a little too bright for me. Um, felt like I was rail fanning again. And we're coming up on a 30 limit. Let's start coasting. Reduce the speed just a little bit. There we go. Should be good coming into Wilson Junction next. But there's a lot more that can be done with the routes in the game. Uh, and there's a lot more that needs to be done. I really hope that the reflective signage thing that they've implemented on recent to Dresden uh, carries over to a lot of the other routes of the game. I know they said that it's going to take a long time if they do want to do that um, to go back and change all of that. But it really would be appreciated for certain routes like East Coast Way. Certain routes, you know, that have uh, trains with weaker headlights like the Class 377, the Class 4... Uh, 465 and 375 on the British routes specifically, you know. I'm really interested in seeing if Brighton Mainline has it and really interested in seeing how bright the headlights are on the Electro Stars. I'm really going to be interested in that. If they do uh, get the light, the uh, things that they've done with Reset to Dresden and put it on the Brighton Mainline, the Brighton Mainline might become my new favorite route for TSW. I'm really interested in operating the Class 387 on that. One thing that I wish I didn't do was uh, I accidentally deleted my London Overground livery for the Class 377. I honestly wish I would have kept that around because I felt like I did really well on that livery. And um, I believe the reason I deleted it... Let's just stop the train. Whoa. That stop position is wildly incorrect. Um, it was telling me to stop right here. That's wild. Look at this lady getting stuck in the door. <laughs> Too tall. Uh, but what I was originally saying, I believe I deleted my London Overground livery. Because uh, I felt like it was just unrealistic to have... Oh, that was a big jump. I felt like it was a bit unrealistic to have London Overground uh, trains on the East Coastway route. But honestly, I'm getting into the habit of just not caring if the livery is accurate to the route or not. Just make liveries that I like, you know? 
I'm thinking on making a, uh, what's the livery's name? I believe a northern livery? For the, a great northern livery. Uh, class 365 for the 465 on uh, Southeastern. I'm, uh, I need to get into the habit of just not caring if it's accurate to the route or not. Just making some nice liveries. Um, so I'm definitely probably going to remake my London uh, Overground livery. Either that or just forget about it as a whole and start working on Thameslink liveries. Because I do want to make a Thameslink livery for the Class 377. And some other liveries for the 387. Maybe a C2C livery for it. And maybe even uh, some liveries for this train right here, the 72 stock. Uh, maybe a 72 Mark 1 stock livery. Or uh, the 67 and the 72 stock, Mark 2 stock, uh, look similar to each other. Similar enough to not warrant me uh, making another livery. Well, a livery uh, to replicate it. See, this is what I mean. Coming into a station at 40 miles per hour and being able to stop at the end of it. On point. Look at that. Look at that stopping position. Perfect. Still got the skills. Ah. I'm so tempting to get I'm so tempted to get that right now. Apparently this was fixed. This was originally clipping into the train. Now when the train stops, you're able to look into it without it clipping the side of the train. I don't believe that because look at it still hanging over the tracks. We're gonna get up right now. Yeah. Sorry passengers, your train is gonna be late. I care more about this collectible. Just walk over the tracks. Walk over the third rail, fourth rail. Okay. I'm now just noticing how stupid that was when we could have ran to the end and used the steps. Uh, greatest train operator still, though. Thank you very much. Haha, -ha, all newspapers. One more to go. I believe I'm missing a map on the line. I will eventually find that map and retrieve it. While I'm back here, I might as well set the train. Stonebridge Park. I'm going to be late anyway. Might as well make ourselves more late. Jesus. Character runs very fast. Nah, that's normal running speed. Hello, sir. You have seats available. Maybe you should sit down. When once you fall and go over. Really hope he falls over now. Please tell me he did. Nope. In our dreams. But, um, back to what I was originally saying. Got sidetracked by that one newspaper. Um, what collectibles could do to a person. Um, but I will be making, I'm, I'm thinking about making some Mark 1 stock liveries for this train. And I've seen more liveries. I haven't seen too many liveries for the 72 stock. But I've seen, I believe, either one or two liveries for it. I believe, um, let me just check my list right here. Uh, I've seen the Mark 1 stock design and the original design when they first entered the system. I believe their original design was just dumb and gray, if I'm not mistaken. I'm not completely sure. Oh, here we go. We're approaching Stonebridge Park now. I believe this is where we're ending our service. Yep, we're definitely ending our service there. See the red? No, that's not even our signal. We did just pass a yellow, I believe, though. So our next is a red. Since our next is a red, we're going to treat it as if we wasn't entering a station with a red on it. Section gap. Okay. So I'm going to enter the station at around 30 miles per hour. We're already a minute late. It doesn't really matter if we're any later. Uh, that's the way I see it. Yep, that's the red signal at the end of the platform. I'm going to enter the station at around 30. Uh, I don't want to overrun it, and it's bad, because that would be a horrible ending to the service. But here we go. We're going to start braking uh, as soon as the first car enters the platform. Right here. Oh, oh, nope. Not street braking now. I miscalculated that by a lot. I did not know we were still in uh, shunting mode. Uh-uh. No train. Stop, 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 stop. Thank you. Thank you. 
Thank you, train. Thank you. Greatly appreciate it. Signal green. Okay. Can we get it? Can, 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 thank you. Oh, I don't remember the two showing up before. Wonder why I didn't say 42 instead of a uh, two. But uh, I, I don't know if that's true to life or not. Here we are crossing tracks. Listen to that track noise. Why, why can't we have that along the whole route? Why is it limited to junctions and, and points? It shouldn't be limited to points. It should be around the whole route, you know? The, over, the, un, the underground doesn't have continuously ground rail. It has a lot of uh, track joints on it. The system was built in the early uh, 1900s and the mid 1800s, so I don't see any reason why we can't have track noise along most of the rails. It's an issue with a lot of TSW routes. Barely uh, LRWR barely has any track noise, and it's a route that's very, very old. And uh, from what I know, and I've been on the route in real life, the line, a specific line, the, the Hempstead. I've been on the line in real life, and uh, there's track noise. So, um, that's, that's a major inaccuracy that they need to get figured out with the game. Boston Sprinter is a good sign, though. I didn't hear anyone recent to Dresden, but I guess that's fine because I barely hear any track noise from German routes in general, even when watching regular videos, uh, real life videos. I, I believe I heard a little bit of track noise, uh, from the Munich S-Bahn in certain videos, but generally... I'm, I'm guessing they use a lot of uh, continuously ground rail, so I'm not really upset with that. The Brian Mainline, though, I will be looking out and watching that route a lot. I know I haven't made a potential video for Reset to Dresden, but that's because I don't know the potential of that route. I'm just not familiar with German routes the same way I'm familiar with American and uh, British routes. So I'm sorry for all of you who are expecting a potential video for that one, but um, it is what it is, honestly. As we near the release of uh, Brian Mainline, though, I'll probably probably be making more videos on that. Oh, we were supposed to set the points out ourselves. So tempting. So tempting. I'm tempted. I'm tempted. Ah, we might as well just do it. Why not? It, it couldn't hurt, right? <sighs> That's messed up. Gold medal? Yes. Yes, I'm a level 198. Bow down to me. Alright, return to free roam. What was the point of the train entering the sidings if it was just going to go back out at uh, in four minutes? Look at that. 14 car. <laughs> a 14 car train. Oh, that is perfect. Hmm. Are our do oh, I thought our doors were a fourteen car train. Let's see. Kind of want a picture of this now. This is something you don't see every day. Let's see if we could try and get it out of the yard. Reverse lockout cutouts. Train. It would be highly appreciated if you could move. <laughs> I am a genius. We have power. Let's turn off our headlights. Looks very stupid. I wasn't planning on doing this this video, but uh one word. Yes. J just yes. Look at that. I was the first person who thought of this idea. You don't believe me, check far back on my YouTube channel. The Scenario Planner, 72 stock, 14 cars. Hmm, let's see. 
Yeah, that's a good picture. Alright, the one thing I want to see is if we could get the train into the platform. If we can't, just gonna end the video there. I didn't plan on doing this before. But here we are. Oh, really a spad. Wow. That's disrespectful game. We still completed the service, so I'm not too upset. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, hit the like button. If you are new to the channel, hit the subscribe button. Uh, if you want to see more content on the channel, you know, do the same. Hit the subscribe button. I'll catch you guys in the next video. Be on the lookout for the recent to Dresden. What you should know video tomorrow. She'll be releasing about 10... 15 a.m. tomorrow, Eastern Standard Time, so be on the lookout for that. Peace.